With the maps and the cars Summer cookouts, uncle got the sandals on Statue of Liberty, we holding up the torch If they ask where I'm from, tell them this is New York We from the home of the biggie People blowing they ciggies And these girls going wild cause they flashing they I think the most obvious question with this lens for vlogging is Is it wide enough? I mean, obviously that's a matter of personal preference But for me, I don't really think it's too tight As to be, like, uncomfortably close you know, it's not like trying to vlog on a 35 millimeter lens with an APS-C size sensor. It's actually usable. I think this lens really shines in these types of driving scenes. You know, the word cinematic gets thrown around way too often nowadays, but in all fairness, this lens does look a bit more cinematic. Like, when you're watching a movie, you don't usually see some super wide-angle fisheye lens with like all that corner distortion. Like, no, it's usually a shot that's more like this. It usually just focuses on the person driving or on the person talking. Now, for you extroverts who always drive around with a car full of people, obviously this lens will not work for you. It's just simply not wide enough. You know, another thing is a setup like this is so incredibly small. You know, with the M6 combined with the little 22 millimeter pancake lens, that's almost pocketable. You know, if it's winter time and you're wearing like a big jacket, this will easily fit in one of your pockets. I mean, right now, all I have is this camera, a little Manfrotto Pixie tripod, and just a lav mic plug directly into the camera. And another important thing to consider is this lens doesn't have image stabilization. You know, on an M6, the image stabilization is okay, but I, you know, it's probably not gonna be quite as smooth as you're hoping if you're doing like a lot of walk and talk footage. But in terms of your handheld shots and stuff, it's, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Autofocus with the M6 and the 22 millimeter lens is just genuinely good. Everything, like in the years that I've been filming with this, it's just been so quick and responsive. Like, I've never had a problem with this lens autofocusing. You know, I have this lens and I have the kit lens, and I notice I actually spend the majority of the time vlogging on this lens over the kit lens. It's very rare that I even bring the kit lens with me these days. I just like the overall look and feel of this lens. And of course, the most obvious difference between this and your kit lens is the amount of light that f2.0 aperture lets in. I mean, I'm currently at 1 50th of a second, f2.0 ISO 160. Let's switch to the kit lens for a second with the exact same settings and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, same exact settings now, 1 50th of a second, ISO 160. The only difference is now we're at f3.5 and as you can tell, significantly darker with the kit lens. I mean, it is nice, you are getting a great deal more of a background, but in terms of light, you're definitely getting way more light with the f2.0 aperture. See, and just to give you an idea, I had to raise the ISO all the way up to 640 just to get kind of like the same look from the original one with the 22 millimeter lens. You're gonna get a much cleaner image from the 22 millimeter at f2.0. I mean, ultimately it comes down to your filming style, but for me personally, the positives kind of outweigh the negatives. Like, I mean, I gotta be honest, I do miss that wide angle lens for vlogging, but Overall, I like having the shallow depth of field, I like having the low light performance, and I just sort of like the overall look. Because, you know, don't forget, I mean, this 22 millimeter lens is a really good lens. It's incredibly sharp and it has great image quality. It's going to have much better image quality than what you're getting from your kit lens. Uh, anyway, I think that's all I've got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.